Hello again, everybody. Welcome to Heartbeats. This is the demo of a game that is currently on Kickstarter. I will have links in the uh, description below to support them. They asked guy emailed me and asked me if I wanted to uh, reach out to me and asked if I wanted to uh, cover his game. I said sure. Take a look at it, and that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, it's got about two thousand dollars of its eight thousand dollar goal. It's got about twenty three days left, so it ends at the end of the month. And this is a free demo you can play right now on Steam. So let's get right into it, shall we? I'm not sure how much of the game is actually completed. They obviously have something here. I don't know how long the demo is, but let's just try it out. They sent me a press kit that has uh, some CGs and it does have some uh, not safe for work CGs. So it seems like there will be adult content in the game, at least, uh, at least on release. So hello and welcome to the Fish and Bits restaurant. You like seafood? Sure hope so. I'll be your host tonight. Do you already have a reservation? No? Get out. Cass. We'll just go by Cass. That's the default name. We can name ourselves whatever we want, but we'll be Cass. Uh, Mr. Cass, right this way, please. God, voice acting kind of really putting it away, huh? Not that I blame you. I would be too if I was eating somewhere fancy with someone as high profile as a moi. Uh, yeah, yeah. Keep it up and your ego's gonna burst. Also, I wouldn't give too much credit to a place with a busted front door. Yeah. wonder what that's about. Also, what's up, man? Two rounds of appetizers isn't enough. How much food do you have to eat before you're ready for an entree? Oh, oh I, I'm, uh, I'm filling up on apps. Poor man's night out. Hey. I'm not that broke. It's a frugal habit, and I happen to enjoy my appetizers regardless. I'm kind of sick of eating out nowadays. It's too expensive. Even fast food has gotten ridiculously pricey. Yeah, you know, and I get it. You know, inflation and all that. Supply chains are messed up. Makes sense, but still, it's like I'm really, really embracing the whole cooking home, home food. You know, trying to avoid eating out whenever possible. Yeah, well, I'm done with my meal, so call over an employee when you're done with your high-class chicken tenders. <laughs> I call over the seemingly lone waiter who's currently struggling to keep up with several customers. It appears he has his hands full at the moment. Antoine, I need help over at table three. I'll be there with you in just a second, ma'am. Yes, sir. Thank you for eating that fish and bits. Can I ask that you recommend, uh... Antoine. And how can I help you two today? We'll take the bill. Sure thing. One moment, please. The waiter speeds off, continuing to deal with far too many issues for one man to handle. I felt so bad. Like, a couple months back, I was at, like, an IHOP. And uh, there was, they were so short-staffed. I felt there was, like, one waiter for the whole restaurant. I felt I felt really bad for the guy because he was working his butt off. Right. You're paying, right? Bro. Bro, you said my treat. You think I have the money to be eating out, man? You think they'd be able to stop us if we ran? Just pay the man, Johnny. Johnny forks over a credit card and we vacate the bustling restaurant. I thank you for dinner if it wasn't on me. Shut up. You love me. Plus, I made the reservation. You're like the pet I don't want anymore, but you've been domesticated. Either I pawn you off to someone else, or I let you die in the wild. But I'm too lazy to die either, so you just keep mooching off of me. Sorry, I'm too lazy to do either, so you just keep mooching off of me. Yeah, yeah. Hey man, I, I know you don't want to hear it, but if, if you ever want to give up on music and make some money, just say the word. I could get you stable work with my connections. Fine. I've got enough to get by, I just need to keep at it, you know? It's a slow burn. I knew what worked when people were listening, but just at some point I, I couldn't write meaningful lyrics anymore. Once I get back into it, I'll be fine. You know, I just gotta get back on the grind. You know, it's been a few months. All right. Well, the offer's always on the table. Think of it as a gift from an old friend. I'll see you around. See ya. Johnny walks off and I head for home. Walk down from the restaurant, a girl accompanied by her parents turns the corner to face me. Her eyes light up. Are you Cass? 
She runs right up to me. I grow a little anxious, but try to put on a brave face. That's so cool. I listen to all your music. My friends and I were even at your last concert. I mustered up the strength to force a smile. I already know what's coming next. You just kind of fell off the face of the earth. There it is. I've just been busy with a lot of stuff lately. Yeah, life of a musician, you know, it's never boring. I don't want to get into it, but I, uh... Don't want to ruin the big surprise album drop. <laughs> I can't wait. The girl's dad nudges her, suggesting that it's time to go. I have to go, but I love your stuff. Family walks off with the girl glancing over her shoulder, then back to her parents to giggle and talk. I got off easy there. I mean, who knows what she'd have said if she knew I haven't made progress on a single song in over two years now. Two whole years. I may deal with delayed releases and remixes for a while now, but it's been a while since our fans recognized me. It almost feels good until I just get hit with guilt for not being able to make any good music anymore. Suddenly, I realize that I'm looking down and sulking. It's okay. It's just a roadblock. I'll be cranking out songs soon again enough. Songs again soon enough. Eh. I decide to take a seat on a nearby bench. As I do, something pokes me from inside my pants pocket. Reaching in, I pull out a tiny notebook and pen. Anything. Just, just write about anything. I tap the pen on the empty, torn-up notebook. My mind wanders for a bit before coming to the realization that it's hopeless. An empty notebook with no ideas, no lyrics, no melodies, no inspiration, no progress whatsoever. Frustrated, I snap my pen in half and throw it into the trash along with my empty notebook. The hell with it. I was a star. I was somebody. Now I'm just an embarrassment. A mess. Damn it. I stand up and look at the sky for a moment before realizing I should get home. As I look up, I realize that I don't quite know where I'm going anymore. Metaphor for my life, perhaps? Was it this way? No, wait. Wait! Yeah, I'm lost. It's late at night and I'm not familiar with the area. I look down to my phone only to see the battery's dead. Classic. That's how they always write it. Because obviously phones nowadays do everything. So like situations that worked back in like the 90s don't work as well anymore. Because everyone has like GPS in their pockets. So it's like, oh, battery's dead every time. Because I mean, I mean, how else would you write it really? No, no signal or battery's dead. One of those two. Now I'm stuck in the back streets of the city with no idea where I'm going. If there's anywhere, it's okay to get lost in. It's not this place. Looks like I've got no other choice. I guess I better turn back and ask for some direct. I turn around quickly without looking to run into something. Hello. I stumble backwards and attempt to regain my composure. My vision clears and I see another little girl sprawled out on the ground. Probably another middle schooler. Very well endowed middle schooler. I must have run into her when I turned around. I wasn't looking where I was going. Here, I'll help you out. I offer the girl a hand to help her back to her feet. She grabs my hand while still in a daze with, from the sudden impact. Hang on one second. I'm going to uh, turn up the voice volume a bit and turn down the music a little bit. There we go. I finally realized the situation I'm in. Where are your parents? Parents? Are they dead? Oh my god, I'm sorry. Offended, she rips her hand away from me while still struggling to stand and falls back down on her butt. Son of a... Are you okay? Hey! The girl slides away and stands up on her own. She jumps up onto her toes with her chin pointing up, trying to look as tall as possible in front of me. I'm not a child. I never said you were. <sighs> I know what you meant. I'm 18 and I'm an adult. You're lucky I'm in a hurry you'd be in deep trouble. She's an adult. Thank God I don't have to help her find her way home. I don't even know where I am. She tries as hard as she can to look up me, me menacingly. Cute. I decided to mess with her a bit. Listen. 
I'm sure your parents are very scary, but if you don't get home soon, I think it's you who should be afraid of them. Stop! The girl runs off with her face puffed up and full of anger. Still never said you were. Cute. My mind clouds itself with questions as I begin to walk back to the restaurant to get directions. Morning already? My god, how long were we out? I sit up in my bed and rub my eyes, greeting the morning light that's shining it through my blinds. This is the day. Right. This is the day. I've got everything I need. I'm finally going to make a breakthrough. Grab my headphones, keyboard, and start messing around with different melodies. Hours pass and about by, and I go from my keyboard to my PC to my guitar to my notebook while barely making any progress. No. That doesn't work. Should I just transpose this? I don't know what I'm doing. My frustration, I jump face first into my bed. My phone vibrates and I look to see a message from Johnny. How's the song coming, Beethoven? Shut up. Throw my phone away from me and it knocks over a line of empty water bottles. Um... Maybe an excuse to clear my head is what I need right now. My stomach grumbles and I look over to see a mountain of empty food boxes in the trash. Well... Add in some groceries. I stop what I'm working on and grab my phone from the ground. It vibrates again, but I just shove it back in my pocket and head out the door towards the mall. We go to the get groceries at the mall? <sighs> Not my first choice, but street vendors. The flavor of shopping in this city never gets old with all the stands. Much more entertaining than having to buy my fruit from a shelf in a giant mega store. I unzip my backpack to locate the map to guide me through the long journey ahead. Grocery list. I begin my quest by locating the Merchant of the Life. Making my everyday task as dramatic as possible is all that gets me through the day. Depression. Shake it off, shake it off. All right. Where to go first? I've got fruit, some entrees, cleaning supplies. What else do I need? Damn it, I never write enough on my list. I don't make grocery lists, but maybe I should. I'm honestly just procrastinating, so I don't have to work on music at this point. I should... Probably just suck it up and head home. I told you. I'm not a child. Huh? I hear yelling between a vendor and a sassy little customer in the distance. Nope. I don't have anything for you unless you show me an ID. Listen. For the third time, I forgot it at home. Why don't you call your mommy and have her buy your things for you? What? Did you just say? Hey there. There you are, sis. I've been looking all over for you. I walk up to the girl and put my hand on her head. Huh? What are you? Huh? That's your sister? Yep. Although she hates to admit it because I stole the good jeans from Mom and Pa before she got a crack at them. <laughs> I look down at her and my heart stops. I've never seen that amount of anger in anyone's eyes before. It's going to be hell to pay for whoever takes the brunt of all that frustration. It's going to be me. <laughs> That's a pretty good son. Here's what the little one was trying to buy. The vendor places a few cans of spray paint and some type of glue on the counter. All, right. All I care is that an adult buys it. If you pay for it and give it to her, that's no skin off my back. So do that with cigarettes, that's illegal. Or alcohol. Uh, thanks. Alright, sis. Okay, what do we say to the nice man? Silently, she gives me one last look before pouting and walking away. <laughs> it gets off with the bill, then. I pay the vendor for the supplies and grab them off the counter. Bye, C1, huh? Best of luck to you, son. Yeah. I tuck the items under my arm and rush after the girl. Wait. The girl stops walking, but she doesn't turn around. I finally kept Jeff to her and put my hands on my knees while leaning forward to catch my breath. <sighs> You're faster than I would have expected. Boy, this voice acting needs some work. I mean, I get it. It's like work in progress, but... So that guy, he... In one quick motion, she leans close to my face, puts one hand on her hip, and points her other hand at the, me threateningly. Listen up. I'm not a child, and I'm not your sister. She grips the front of my shirt tightly. Try it. Keep making fun of me, and I'll... I hold out the items from the vendor in front of me. Hey. I believe you were trying to buy these. She lets me go and takes a step back. You, you were trying to help me? Alright. It was a combination of that and trying to save that vendor from what appeared to be a world of pain. 
Okay, maybe you're all right. Well, obviously, we're trying to help her. I would say that you're pretty all right yourself, but I wouldn't want to be burned at a Lolocon. Maybe you do deserve this. My super sense is kicking as I notice the intent of her message. I fully prepare myself to dodge her attack. I don't intend to become a masochist today. I quickly look at her arm reeling back at the shoulder. Then her the hand then taken, has taken the form of a knife and is currently receding into attack position. I ready my own hand to intercept the slap at the wrist so that I have the opportunity to counter. Wait a second. She's twisting her hips as well. I'm as calculated. From the angle that she's coming in at, it looks like she's going to poke me in both of my eyes. I need those. Better cover my face so as not to go blind. But doing this will leave me defenseless towards her next attack. I can't dodge low because she is low to the ground. Shoot. I need to formulate a new plan. But what else is she going to do with her hand? Oh god. Oh no. It's a fist. What should I do? What can I do? It's too late. All I can do is brace her impact and angle my body so that the least amount of damage is done to me. If I simply rotate my... Ow. Did that feel painfully slow to you too? That my pain hurt you. I rub my newly banana bruised arm with a pout on my face. Nice. Nice dance moves you got there. Should have left you stranded back there. Sorry. Alright, look, I'm sorry. Sometimes my temper can get the better of me, so I appreciate you helping me out. Oh? Oh, yeah, the temper I didn't notice. <sighs> I hide it well, but sometimes random assholes bring out the worst in me. She balls up her fist thinking of the vendor who made fun of her, and I give her a concerned look. Sorry. Well. Guess I'm to blame too. Probably could have been a little more civil when it bumped into you last night. Circle. Just don't call me short. You got it, Shrimpy. <laughs> I swear, it's like you want me to hit you or something. You sure you're not a masochist? Mm, nope. Girl smiles a bit. Hey. Hey, you can smile. Maybe you're not so bad. Our sci fi conversation is interrupted by a loud stomach rumble. Dang. Again, the shrimp remind me I haven't eaten anything all day. Shit, I don't know if I have any left over for food, any of the food here. Jeez, guess I'll wait till I get home. Girl lowers her head in contemplation for a moment. Hey. If you help me finish my shopping today, I'll reward you with some food for your help. Mm, yeah, free food. I take a second to think about her offer. If a girl offers you food, you always take it. Even if you don't like the person, just be nice. Unless they're trying to kill you. Then you get someone else to eat your food. I could walk home hungry and then eat the biggest bowl of store brand cereal the world has ever seen. Oh, I got some cereal too I need to eat up. Or I could help out this girl I just met for free. Mall food. Oh, that's a no-brainer. All right. Time for cereal. So? Where do we start? She smiles again at the notice of a successful deal. Well, I figure I should start by introducing myself. Hmm. She turns to me in points. I'm Sayaka. Don't forget it. Sayaka. Oh? Don't think I'd be able to even if I tried. I mean, your name's right next to your words. I'm Cass. Let's go. The girl grabs the front of my shirt and drags me along with her. What? First we shop, then we eat. You're gonna carry my bags, and then you'll get paid in food like the good pack meal you are. Is that all I am to you? Here I am, being dragged around by a girl whose head barely reaches my chin. Sayaka gives me a smile and continues walking. Let's get to it, bro. <laughs> Close my eyes and chuckle aloud. What have I got myself into? Oh, oh, ah, kind of something they showed more of that. Exhausting. Fall into my couch, letting my brain and muscles relax after a long day of shopping. Well, that's what I get for be trying to be a nice person. If I ever have to see that girl again, I imagine in my head Sayaka's evil smile and sinister laugh as I slowly begin to drown in a mountain of shopping bags. Helpless screams barely escape my lips as I sink deeper into the bargains, leaving only darkness and the haunting sound of laughter. I quickly jump up from the couch and open my eyes as I realize I didn't drift enough. I know who's visiting me in my nightmares tonight. While rubbing my eyes, I sit up on my couch and reach for my phone. One unread message. Oh. Must have been one I ignored Johnny. 
Phone screen lights up as I turn it on. A message from Ari takes center stage on my screen. Ari messaged me? I anxiously sink back into the couch. Wait. Clem messaged me. Clem is a pop star who's grown extremely popular with her fan base in the recent years. Clem's real name is Ari. I was confused for a moment. Okay. And Ari is my childhood friend. There's always one. Hey. It's been a while since we talked, hasn't it? Last time I talked with Clem was not a happy conversation. She was on the upswing of her career and I was on the downswing of mine. One night my ego got the better of me and I said some things I regretted. We haven't really talked since. Mm. Life's too short to hold grudges, that's what I say. Just then my phone starts vibrating again. I fumble with my phone out of shock and surprise until I'm able to settle down. Shit. She's calling, oh my god. I contemplate whether or not to answer the call. It's hard to imagine what I should say to her. I almost decline, but instead I decide to put on a strained smile and just accept the call. Hello? Cass, are you there? Hey. There's a short pause. Hey. Been a while. Get my message? I realize that I never actually read her message from this morning. Oh. Oh, you messaged me. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see it. Yeah. Guess you didn't read it then. Well, anyway, where have you been? It's been a while since we talked. She shifts the awkward conversation as I continue to grit my teeth. Mm. Okay. Well. I mean, okay is a word for it. You already know about my career, and well, I mean, nothing's changed there. Why did I say that? This conversation's painful. Sorry. I, I didn't. I didn't mean to. It's okay. It's all right. Everything is. It's okay. Well. Listen. I, I'm in town for the next few weeks, and I I want to see you. I rack my brain for an excuse. Oh, shoot. Uh, I, I'm busy the next few weeks. I'm not sure if I... Please. I don't care about what happened in, my, in the past. You're my friend. You know, and it kills me that things have been like this. Please, if, if nothing else, just pretend like the fight never happened. Like, it's just us again having fun together. I can hear sniffles from Clem's line. Clem. I, my anxiety suddenly skyrockets. My chest tightens and I feel like I can't catch my breath. I can't. I can't. I can't. Well, I'm free. I'm free this Thursday. My phone, my grip on the phone strengthens as I force my way through the words. Yeah. If that's all right with you. Cass takes a moment before responding. I'll message you the deets later on. Sounds good. My head is in my hands as I contemplate what I've actually agreed to. Hey, you're okay, right? Without raising my head, I squeak out an answer. Yeah. Let's talk soon. See ya. Phone hangs up. My arms drop to my sides as I fall back on the couch. <sighs> Not okay. Just as I finish eating, I flop down on my couch. It's been a few days since I've seen Sayaka, but she's still on my mind. All of a sudden, it hits me that I'm singing out loud. I do that a lot. If only were that easy. Hey there. It's open. You know. For someone with your recognition, I wouldn't think you'd be so carefree about letting whoever knocks on your door into your house. Sorry. Uh. I got the hiccups. I get mistaken for a homeless guy more than I get recognized nowadays. <laughs> What's up, Johnny? Well, you know, if they don't make a "here's Johnny" joke whenever he comes over at some point in the game, it will be an immense failure. Uh, just seeing if you wanted to go to karaoke or something. You look like shit, though. Are you finally entering your emo grunge phase? Nah. Uh, I'm not there yet. <laughs> So I, maybe if I could write grunge lyrics. Johnny pops out on the couch next to me with a handful of my chips from the counter. Hey, did I say you could eat my chips? Look at me, man. I'm hanging back right here. You working on a song? No. <laughs> if only. I just finished eating. Sure, I'm down to do some singing. Sweet. He hops back up off the couch and pulls me up by my arm. Let's go. Two of us head out the door towards the karaoke place together. 
On our walk to the karaoke, we were greeted by the voice of a siren, a female temptress, or a police officer. We'll never know. Hey. Oh, it's her. <gasps> I quickly run behind Johnny's back. Psyche crosses the street and reaches for my arm to yank me from my safe space. Whoa. Hey, what's up? You want an autograph? Johnny, my hero. What? You really gonna act like that after treating you so nice? I was going to ask him if he wanted to get something to eat since he hasn't given me a call since I gave him my number. Oh, shame. Taking a child's phone number? My god. Right. It's not for shame like that. That's not how you spell it, right? It's two words. I'm pretty sure. Unless that's another way to spell it that I'm just not familiar with. Doesn't matter. It'll all be ironed out, I'm sure. If it meets its Kickstarter goals, I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. Nice. Well, I got to say, it's very forward of you not being seen as the doughboy anymore, huh, bro? Hey. I said the homeless guy, not the doughboy, you ass. Uh. I can stand to lose a few. What? Excuse me. Hey. hey, no offense, man, but you've been packing it on like winter's coming since the downfall. Winter is coming, and that's not the point. Maybe if you weren't so nice taking me out to dinner all the time, I wouldn't eat so much. Boy, we really sound like an ass there. Maybe if you stopped spending money on me, take me out to nice places and eat dinner all the time, I wouldn't be so fat. Well. Maybe if I, you weren't such a nice guy, I wouldn't feel the need to invite you to dinner. Yeah? Yeah, and maybe if you weren't so handsome, I wouldn't accept all your invitations to gorge myself. And if you weren't the perfect man, I wouldn't enjoy your company as much as I do. This is a hetero game, right? We continue to argue as Sayaka's anger gauges. Gauge reaches critical levels. Ladies! What? Hold on. Let's stop the comp assaults for two seconds and sort things out. Oh, yeah. Who are you? That's the hideously unattractive nightmare that's been haunting me since she forced me to help her buy drugs for her. Huh. Hey. Huh. I run back to my safe space behind the wall of John. Look. My name is Sayaka and we met a few days ago when he offered to help me with my groceries. Drugs. Nice to meet you. Drugs. I'm Johnny. And you're also the occasional bodyguard to the doughboy over here. Pleasure. Well, you wasted enough of my time. I wanted to thank you for helping me with my shopping by buying you lunch, but you didn't even insult me, so... Wait. Wait, please, please, this is no reason to be so hasty. Hey. It's a great idea. You two can have lunch together and I can get to my meeting that I'm just now realizing is a thing. <laughs> Hold on. Nice try, Bramiac. What? You know that I know you don't have any meetings today. What the hell is that? Hang on, let me look that up. Is that a real word? Bramiac? Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I have to do this. Live like this. There's Brainiac, which is what I thought it was. That's probably what it actually is. Yeah, well. Sometimes things happen, yada yada. Whoops, so look at the time. I gotta go. Best stop best be off. Talk to you later. Oh traitor. Thanks. Oh, I think I'd have to say traitor. That food still on the table, Fireball? Hey. Don't call me that. Oh? Is that a yes? <laughs> she slits out a sign, a small chuckle. Let's go. She seems fun. We spend the afternoon window shopping for Sayaka and window eating for me. Hey. Are you okay? My heart stops for a second when that word makes me think of uh, Clem. I'm not okay. Why do you ask? Well. You're not being a sassy and annoying as usual. What's wrong? Uh, Nothing. I'm probably just tired. That's all. Um, Maybe the surprise of someone dropping in on you caught you off guard. Well, I mean, yeah. An old friend contacted me the other day and I'm meeting with her tomorrow. It's kind of scary. <laughs> Jealous? She turns sour at the mention of Clem and storms off. Uh, if that ain't my luck with women... Wait, what am I supposed to do with all these shopping bags? 
To my surprise, she returns a few minutes later with an ice cream cone for each hand. Oh. You're still here. Yeah. I'm gonna leave you like that. She holds out one of the cones. Listen. I'm not used to having to cheer people up, so don't expect this kind of thing very often. Whatever you have to deal with tomorrow, you're just gonna suck it up and deal with it. Just don't bitch about it to me too often, too much after it's over. A smile crawls across my face and I take the ice cream from her hand. As I take a look at my ice cream, I look over to see Sayaka smiling back at me. Thanks. Where are we at on time? 30 minutes. Okay. You do suck at cheering people. What? She gave us an ice cream. That's a great way to cheer someone up. Very few people don't like ice cream. I laugh when she gets mad and we spend the rest of the day walking and talking before parting ways. Thursday already. Is there no God? The day has come, at least for my meeting with Clem. We had agreed over text to meet at a nearby music lounge, and here I am, standing outside the door. All right. Come on, it's just a meeting. It's not that difficult. How long has it been since I've seen her? Am I even going to recognize her? Why is it so hard for me to meet with an old friend? Damn it. As questions keep swirling in my head, I notice that my hands are shaking, and I've taken a step back from the door. No. I'm here, and I'm going to do this. Take a few deep breaths to still my nerves. In and out like gentle waves. With eyes closed, I push open the door and cross the threshold and pass the point of no return. Still terrified, I let the air wash over me and acclimate to my new surroundings. Uh, Sir? Uh, Ari? Open my eyes to the sound of a woman's voice. I was going to say, this is a music place? This is, looks like a house. Welcome to the music lounge. Can I help you with anything today? Uh, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm just here meeting with somebody. Uh. Open tables are to your right and private rooms are to your left. Look to my right and see a few people sitting at a table. One table in particular hosts an orange-haired girl with her back turned to me. Uh, thanks. Oh, I see her over there. Thanks for the help. Of course. Call me over if you need any help. My name's Kate. As I walk away, I ponder why I have to make everything so needlessly dramatic in my head. Before I get all the way there, the girl at the table turns towards me and my heart stops. Hey. I resist the urge to cover my face and book it out of the building. Instead, I slowly approach the table she's seated at. Hey there. So... Oh, look at that. That's a cool jacket. I like that. It doesn't keep you really warm, though. The shoulders, I, I don't know. I, don't, I mean, I kind of like the idea of it, but practicality-wise, I don't know. It's been a while. I'm glad to see you. She's energetic and happy as always while I stand here nervously. You're just going to keep standing there? I think I see across from Clem at the table. We both just stare at each other for a moment, avoiding eye contact. It's awkward, you know. I begin once again to wonder why she called me here. No wedding ring on her finger, so she's not getting married, thank God. Maybe it's to rub her career... Share good news about her career with me. So... What do you think? Huh? My mind races to figure out what she could mean. Uh... You haven't read my messages, have you? I look at the ceilings shyly. Nah. Uh, I guess it slipped my mind. So, why do you want to meet? She clasps her hand together and takes a deep breath. Sorry? What? Yeah. I love Sweetness, my record label. My full attention turns toward Clem. Um... Why would you do that? You are practically on the way to celebrity status. Why would you give that up? Why would you want to give it up? Clem? Is dead. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Clem dead? Question mark. Clem was a persona made by sweetness, and I was sick of it. I have no creative freedom. Being forced to act a certain way on stage and in front of fans, changing my lyrics to fit with what they wanted, and even hiding my face in public to not skew the idea of Clem. Clem realizes how passionate she's becoming as she's now standing at the table. She takes a deep breath and sits back down. Clem is dead. Call me Ari. Okay. You don't know how sad I was when I heard you call me that. I mean, we didn't know, you know? It's not really our fault. She muttered something under her breath that I couldn't quite hear. All right. I won't call you Clem anymore. Well? She leans across the table to me with large eyes looking at me expectantly. Sorry. Sorry. Her cheeks turn slightly pink before she looks at me with a confused stare. Mm -hmm. For what? 
for, for everything, for being such an asshole, being, being so full of myself, being mad at you for being amazing, getting into a fight and for not talking to you and so on. I've taken falling so hard for me to get over myself and I think I'm low enough right now that I've been able to see mistakes in a new light. I know people don't change so easily, but I'm still trying to get better. She stares at me for a second before beginning to laugh. Mm -hmm. So funny. <laughs> nothing, nothing. I'm just really glad to see you again. And I forgive you, you hopeless idiot. Nothing in the afternoon of some games and music can't fix. Maybe I'll have to invite her over to play some games again like old times. Well, Sure, but what's the plan from here? Well, That's actually the reason I called you up. I'm making a record label. You're starting a record label? Oh my. What? You don't have another label lined up? Our emotions for me to calm down. Nope. I want the freedom to do what I want, how I want, and help others who didn't have the opportunities I did to do the same. Uh. But money, promotion, art, music, li lyrics, venues, have you thought any of this out? Uh. <laughs> That's a no. The chuckle of someone who didn't think any of this out escapes your lips. Shoot. None of it? Okay, so... It's all about connection. Oh, oh, she wants me. She wants me for my connections to Johnny. Jesus, you're worse than I am. Uh -huh. Ain't that just why we get along so well? Please. So, I do know people who can help me out with the more businessy and production side of things, but what I do need help with is art, writing, videos, and promotions, which is where you come in. <gasps> me? Yeah. Yeah, you doofus. I want you to join me in creating the label. You can help with writing music. Be one of the first performers on the label and help find some people with your connections. The anxiety that almost faded once again comes rushing back over me like a wave. Huh? You want me to write? Okay. Listen, it's not a pity or anything. I know you've had it rough for a while, and I want to help you help me help you. Something like that. Yeah. Always finding a way to make the serious thing sound ridiculous. <laughs> Learn it from the best. I smile a bit, but I still have to wonder whether or not I'm even able to write and perform like I used to. Well. What do you say? Partners, uh, 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 uh. she sticks out her fist across the table. I reach out and bump fist, thereby sealing the contract. All right, I try my best. Awesome. What I like to hear now on one last word of business um, food, well, a name. Oh, hang on, I think I might know what he's gonna call it. I know you're great at naming things, so I'll leave it to you. Huh. A name, huh? She's right, though. I did name my first cat Kiki D <laughs> when I was a kid. That is a great name. A million names swirl through my head. Oh. I just jazzed my pants. Scorch the Lion. Symphonic Orchestra. Note Nostalgia. Oh, that's a good one. I don't like the other ones. Well, I used to come up with perfection, but boy, this is it. Nope. You know, you have me come up with the name. You ask me to do it, and then you just immediately reject it. But it outlines our long relationship and how it originated and grew into the warm embrace of music. Nope. I'm not calling the music label Nostalgia. Look, I knew there'd be haters, but I never expected it to be you. Hmm. To think of something else, something related to music and uh, content and emotion put out by those at the label. I close my eyes and concentrate on thinking... For some reason, Sayaka appears in my mind. I can feel my heart beat from my chest. Little heartbeat. That's... Why little? Uh... I don't know. Maybe we have a heart defect. Hey. You making fun of me, boy? I'm one shorter than you. I raise her fist for... Readies her fist for a good nooging. No! Forget it. Well... Actually, I like heartbeats. What if we just use that? Oh. King of naming stuff does it again. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, well. We spend the rest of our time together talking about the label and catching up on each other's lives. See ya. Thanks again for meeting me. I'm super excited to get started on the label together. Yeah. Nice seeing you again. Ari right, waves goodbye and starts walking away. Oh. Make sure you get a hold of that videographer connection you were telling me about. We're having a meeting at your place tomorrow. What? That, uh, we didn't agree on that. Well, well that's what's happening. Alright, she's gone. 
I really did enjoy seeing her again. It feels like a huge weight was lifted off my chest. Eh, for the most part. That's right. I told her I'd, that I'd message a friend I'd worked with in the past who could help us out with the video recording, planning, and editing. I should give them a text and let them know we're meeting at my house tomorrow, apparently. I start sending a message on my way home for the night. Looks like I've got some interesting times ahead of me. Hmm. Lee, we didn't get in the demo. Oh. That's okay. I don't really have a stage presence. What? Are you crazy? You're adorable. Grace, stop it. Well, I suppose we'll just have to see more of each other in the full game. See you then. Well, that's it for the demo, then, it looks like. It's funny, because it was going to end after that part anyway. Alrighty, well, there you go. There's Brady, the person who uh, contacted me. To kind of do a bunch of stuff. But okay, there's the voice actresses. Actors. I don't recognize any of them, but that's okay. With that said, I that's gonna be the end of the video, and I hope you check it out on Kickstarter and you know donate if you got you know extra dollars so or any little bit helps. So with that said, I will see you all next time and have a good day.